नक्षणे लक्षण से प्रवृत्तिर्न स लक्षण स लक्षण लक्षण नाप्यन्यत्र प्रवर्तते न लक्षणे लक्षण से प्रवृत्तिर्न स लक्षण स लक्षण लक्षण नाप्यन्यत्र प्रवर्तते MMK chapter 5 verse 3 Neither in the absence nor in the presence of characteristics is there instigation of characterizing nor does it get going at some other place away from where characteristics are present or absent So what we're talking about is the the characterizing of space. Does space have characteristics or not have characteristics? And principle number one in MMK is that existence is the eternity view, non-existence is the view of annihilation. And the Buddha taught dependent arising in the middle, by the middle. So not, ex not that characteristics exist, not that characteristics do not exist, not that space exists, not that space does not exist. So it has to do, this has to do, I'm keenly aware, with the problem of trying to be right or not. Because trying to be right, trying to be right, contracts space. And when you stop trying to be right, you have more space. Trying to be right is a sort of the original form of end gaining. Because there is no such thing as being right. It's, it's the big trap in, in uh, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam. Judaism they're all they're all spheres of activity in which the tendency is for venerable so-and-so reverend so-and-so the rabbi so-and-so to want to try to be right the one who's right and there is no such animal as being right so all that happens is what Alexander called fixing that's what Marjorie Barlow said again. Religion is mainly a matter of fixing. Not, not, that, that's not saying originally it should be like that, but a scientific observation of what happens suggested to Marjorie that was so. Religion is mainly about fixing. Like compassion, you see. Everybody, his dog knows that Buddhism is all about compassion, largely thanks to the Dalai Lama. That, that gets you nowhere, knowing, having the knowledge that it's all about compassion and, and using that as your mirror for judging what's true and what's not true. You know, you're compassionate, you're not compassionate, so you, you know, you're, that's hate speech because you're not being compassionate. It's a totally non empty understanding of things. So, that's the general point that's being made right through MMK. And what we're, what we're talking about, particularly in this verse, is whether characteristics, and in particular characteristics of space, are they present or are they absent? Do, they, do characteristics of space, like expanding and contracting, do they exist or do they not exist? So, working from the English, neither in the absence so that's na, na, not, a, absence. Neither in the absence nor in the presence. So that's na in the second pattern and sa. So the, the prefix a means absence and the prefix sa means presence or pos it's a possessive suffix sa. So it means we, you know, 
having or being with. So we've got na lakshane, na sa lakshane. Sorry, should that size not long. Na lakshane, na sa lakshane. So difficult not to impose one's conception of English pronunciation onto a Sanskrit word. So I said, na lakshane, na sa lakshane. That, that's wrong. It should be na lakshane, na sa lak lakshane. Laksh is long, e is long. Nasa is short. Nasa lakshane. Na lakshane. Nasa lakshane. Neither in the presence of characteristics. Nasa lakshane. No, after again. Here we go. You see that? That sums up what I was saying about. That's a little kind of illustration of the difficulty of not trying to be right. You can, I can spend hours preaching about how not trying to be right gives you space. And I've just, in the same, exactly the same way, just spent a minute explaining it's not nasalakshane, it's nasalakshane. Then, about one second later, what do I say? Exactly the wrong thing I've just been talking about. I think St. Paul said something about this. What was that phrase? You know, the, the good that I would do, I don't do. But the evil that I wouldn't do, that I do. There's the human condition, isn't it? Nalakshane locative. In the absence, so alakshane, in the absence Na lakshane, not in the absence of characteristics. Na salakshane, not in the presence of characteristics. So na na lakshane, na salakshane, neither in the absence nor in the presence of characteristics. Is there instigation? So pravriti. Is nominative singular feminine, so nominative often means there is, so pravriti means there is rolling in motion into motion. So vrit, vrit means to roll, pravrit means to roll forward, and pravriti, the noun, feminine noun, pravriti means rolling forward or setting in motion. So in this case, lakshanashya pravritihi, there is instigation of, so lakshanashya, genitive, genitive singular, of characterizing. And again, characterizing for me works better than characteristic here, because he's talking about, he's making us think about the absurdity of a, pre, a priori existing space on which characterizing somehow gains a foothold so that there are characteristics and so hence this hence this statement in the first line neither in the absence nor in the presence of characteristics so locative na lakshane na salakshane is there instigation pravritihi of characterizing of characterizing lakshanasya na lakshane lakshanasya pravritir na salakshane neither in the absence nor in the presence of characteristics is there instigation of characterizing nor does it get going so that's na again and Api, also, so not also means nor, nappy. Does it get going? Pravartate. So this is a third person singular of pravrit, which is also the, the root of pravritihi in the second pada. So pravartate, it starts rolling, or I'll translate it gets going. 
So napi pravartate, nor does it get going. Anyatra. Anyatra means elsewhere. So anya means other, and tra is a locative suffix. So anyatra, other place, elsewhere, some other place. And anyatra takes the uh, ablative. So another place away from, and the ablative compound is salakshana plus alakshana plus the ablative dual suffix abhyam. So salakshana, salakshana, alakshana, abhyam, one long compound, salakshana, alakshana, abhyam. So away from salakshana, presence of characteristics, alakshana, absence of characteristics. So I've translated for short, away from where characteristics are present or absent. So again, no, na plus api, na api. Does it get going? Pravartate. At some other place. Anyatra. Away from where characteristics are present or absent. Salakshana lakshana abhyam. I'm, I'm saying the same thing again and again, but it bears repeating. The kind of what we're learning in Alexander work is aided by an empty conception of time and space. So space-time space-time as scientists conceive it as something that is out there is not helpful in, in Alexander work. If you think you're letting the head go forward and up in space-time, that's a non-empty conception. And it sort of devalues the importance of letting the head go forward and up. Letting the head go forward and up is neither something to do with the existence of space-time and nor is it a negation of the existence of space and time. Letting the head go forward and up is a happening. There, there is, there is no space-time as an existing, non-empty thing. In which case, to negate it is also false. So, what does it mean to let the head go forward and up? It's not something to be thought about. It's a different kind of thinking. There's the difficulty. Letting the head go forward and up is thinking. It's it's thinking space. It's, that's what it is. It's thinking space. It's not thinking about space. That was a distinction that Marjorie Barlow clearly made. She's two kinds of thinking she spoke about. Thinking that we practice in Alexander work. Think the head forward and up. Think it. Don't try and do it. Think it. And then there's thinking about. So you can think about reflexes and think about dart spirals and think about doing this. Think about this, that and the other. Again, you hear inexperienced Alexander teachers say, I'd like to think about blah, blah, blah. But that's, again, it's one step removed, isn't it? It's like saying, thinking in space-time. It creates a sort of separation. It's one step removed. 
I'm really struggling to express to people what Marjorie Barlow expressed to me as much as anything else with her hands. It's what a, a good teacher's hands in the Alexander they give you a sense of space. Uh, demonstrate what think the teacher uses the hands to demonstrate what thinking means. Every lesson, Marjorie used to say, should give the pupil a little bit more understanding of what those words mean. To let the neck be free, to let the head go forward and up. To let the back lengthen and widen, sending the knees forwards and away. So it's not a negation, but expansion and contraction. It's expansion does not exist as a thing unto itself. Lengthening and widening, in other words, does not exist as a thing unto itself. But neither does it not exist. It's a happening. It's a happening. It's an empty happening. That if we were wise, we wouldn't grasp the things as we do. And the first one, and you'll see me do it in these videos hundreds or thousands of times, the first kind of grasping is try to be right. Try to be right. Despite the fact I'm in a beautiful spot now, it's a little bit on the chilly side, but the sun's shining. No chainsaw has disappeared into the into the distance, can't hear the chainsaw whatsoever. You know, on a winter's day, this is my favourite spot in the world to be. Just here with the the sun shining, winter sun. And little bits of light shining on there, shining on the leaves, where wherever there's moisture in the garden. So, yeah, just being here is quite a good antidote to trying to be right. But uh, you can rest assured on some, some level, subtly or grossly, the habit of a lifetime will be trying to assert itself and, and trying to cause this contraction of being right, grasping onto being right, as if there was some such thing as being right. And that's the characteristic, that's characteristic of space, the contracting quality of space. And if we were wise, we choose not that. I mean, we can explore that as well. That's, that's one of the things I liked about Marjorie's teaching. If you think you're doing something wrong, Go on, do it as hard as ever you can, and then stop. And I think something that there's something about me that I should pr probably pay more attention to that, because it, you know, really, what would it look like to go to the extreme of trying to be right, you know? and then and then stop, stop doing that, be the most stiff-necked religious prat you could possibly be for a while. Give full vent, you know, explore it like you're an actor on stage playing a part. Really try to be right and see, see how far that gets you in terms of contracting or expanding of space. So ironically, you might find freedom in that. Like an actor, you know, who enjoys playing a, a whole, the whole gamut of dramatic parts. It's full of ironies, you know. Like if you, if you, if you sense you're given the direction, let the head go forward, but because of trying to be right or whatever obstacle there is, it's not working. Your breathing isn't becoming freer. Oh, do the other bloody thing as hard. You can pull it, pull it back and down. You can't hardly breathe. 
and then so go to the extreme of doing the wrong thing, study what the wrong thing is, and, uh, and then stop. But the difficulty again is the wrong thing essentially is not the doing, it's the, the root of the wrongness is in, is in the wrong conception. That's what we're studying MMK for, really. The root of so, as I said before, I knew there was something wrong with Nishijima Sensei's teaching. His teaching on posture was the tell. The teaching on posture was the tell. And it was, it's, it was difficult to unpick because, like my wife, Nishijima Sensei is Japanese, and Japanese culture is pretty much founded on the teaching of emptiness. But it's more instinctive, it's in their bones, you know, they're, they're patient people. They, they tend to enjoy their action and do it unhurriedly. Both Nishijima Sensei and my wife call themselves slow. Uh, so being slow is conducive to having space, you know, it's, it, it's conducive to expanding space. Being in, in a hurry, you tighten, tighten, become tight and right. So, so the irony is that uh, he's trying to unpick what is true in Japanese culture, what is deeply, deeply, profoundly true, being rooted in emptiness, and what is false, being rooted in a lack of understanding of their own tradition. So, this I knew was false. I knew it was false. But if you go, it's, it's, the root of it is, is not just a, f a misunderstanding about posture. It's a misunderstanding about end gaining, and it's a mis absolutely a root. It's a failure to understand clearly what the teaching of emptiness is, even if it's part of your culture and you understand it intuitively. Uh, Nishijima Sensei didn't understand it clearly. So that's why you've got the footnote in chapter 2 of Shobogenzo saying that emptiness means being as it is. That might be true to some extent, but it's not what Nagarjuna is endeavouring to clarify in this verse and through the whole of MMK. Lakshane, Lakshana, Sir, Provetir, Nasa Lakshane, Salakshana, Lakshana, Pem, Napenetra Proverta, Day.